Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines overnight, a woman and child hurt after a wrong way crash on Interstate 35. We have the latest on their conditions. Some of the nation's top health experts warning lawmakers that reopening too quickly could have serious consequences. I'm Inez de la in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, Thunderbird scheduled to fly over San Antonio today. Is Mike going to cooperate weatherwise? I don't know if it's a Mike equation. <laughs> hey, good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is May 13th, and I don't know if you'd call it late word or very early word that the Thunderbirds may delay their flight times, change their flight times, or postpone today's flyover due to inclement weather. Well, let's check in with Mike. What are the chances? Well, I think as far as cloud cover, it's going to be, say, about 50-50 you know, with the 50% you know, clouds. So I was calling it partly cloudy skies. We're going to have a lot more clouds up through about noontime. I know they're scheduled to fly to come into the area about 120 this afternoon. So we'll still have you know, a lot of clouds. I don't know how much clear skies they need. So they, you know, so the. Well, I mean, you know, how, I mean, are we talking high cloud cover, or low cloud. No, it's going to be kind of, kind of some lower clouds there. So that may. So if they're going to fly all the way in from Nellis, right. where They obviously want to be seen. Right. So therein and lies the problem. Fly fairly low. So yeah, we'll still have some clouds hanging around here. You know, unfortunately. Hmm. So uh, maybe if it's later on in the afternoon, it'd be look a little bit better. Uh, as far as right now, they do have a lot of clouds out there, and we don't have any rain being picked up on radar. It's a whole different story than what we had yesterday. We're not going to have a repeat of yesterday uh, today around here. 67 degrees in town, 66 Bulverde and uh, mid 60s out there in parts of the hill country. Molds moderate, grass and pecan are all on the uh, the low side and throughout the rest of today. Again, more clouds up through about noontime and then I think we'll see sort of mixture of sunshine and clouds, calling it partly cloudy skies, 88 for a high temperature and obviously some humidity out there. Now you can't rule out a shower today. It's not very likely though. Out to the west, though, we may have a couple of thunderstorms trying to develop later on tonight. We'll talk about that because there is the threat for some some of those to be on the strong to potentially severe side way out to the west. Uh, tomorrow's going to be a lot like today. Then we got to talk about Friday and especially Saturday. That could be a very, very wet day. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Good morning, sir. Well, good morning, Mike, and good morning, everyone at home. As we take a look at the uh, roadways there, you can see everything in the green. So we're off to a pretty good start so far. As we take a look, uh, Trans Guide. There we go. Highway 151 there at 410 so far. No problems there. Looks like all lanes are open and not too many folks out there. 281 at Sprucewood Lane. Moving to 35410 up on the northeast side. Have a few vehicles out there in the roadway and not too bad there. I-10 at 410. Just remember, buckle up once you head out this morning. Mark. Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, a family in a minivan hit head on by a wrong way driver on I-35. It happened late last night in the southbound lanes of 35 at Southwest Military Drive. Sarah Costa joins us live from home with more on this story. Sarah. Good morning, Mark. It was a family of five traveling in that minivan when they were struck head on by a wrong way driver driving in the main lanes and southbound I-35. This happening just before 1130 last night on the south side when police say the family was struck by a man driving a gray sedan going the wrong way on the interstate. San Antonio police say a 47-year-old woman in the van was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. She also had a broken leg. A three-year-old was also taken to University Hospital with minor injuries, police say. Now, the ages of the other family members in the van were not released by police. As for the man driving the car that hit them, police say he was also transported to University Hospital in serious condition. Police say they believe he was driving intoxicated and will have his blood drawn at the hospital for a potential DWI. Now that wrong way driver police say could potentially also face intoxicated assault charges. Live from home, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. San Antonio police have arrested a man they say is involved in a murder on the city's west side. 25-year-old Justin Rodriguez is accused of shooting and killing a man at the intersection of West Commerce and North San Jacinto around 1 o'clock yesterday. It took police just eight hours to make an arrest. Witnesses told SAPD they saw someone shoot from inside a vehicle before taking off. 
The victim was pronounced dead on his way to the hospital and identity has not been released. Nursing homes continue to be a concern when it comes to the coronavirus. Metro Health says they've been conducting universal testing in nursing facilities and welcome help from the state. Out of the 15 nursing homes tested so far, COVID-19 was confirmed at four. The city is now saying there are 39 cases. That does not include the deadly outbreak at Southeast Nursing and Rehab that's claimed 19 lives. The city now separating cases by community, jail, as well as other congregate settings. Here's a look at the latest number of COVID-19 cases in Bear County. Right now, there are 1,942 cases confirmed. You can see that more than 1,000 people have recovered. 66 people are hospitalized, 57 have died, 44% of the cases are still fighting the illness. Well, since most of the school year was spent learning from home, the Texas Education Agency wants to know just how effective distance learning was this year. So the TEA is offering an optional end of year assessment. The free tool would help plan for what's being called the COVID slide. Researchers say in some cases, students could see significant academic declines because of the interruption from the pandemic. The TEA says the test is not a replacement for the STAR test, but it will help in planning for the summer and upcoming school year. If parents would like to participate, they can register their student until June 5th. We have a link on our website, KSAT.com. Some of the nation's top health experts warning lawmakers that reopening too quickly could have serious consequences. Their message is at odds with the president, who is pushing to get the country running again. ABC's Inez de la Cuatera is in Washington with the latest. Overnight, the nation's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, with a stark again, warning. It's my concern that if some areas, cities, states, or what have you, jump over those various checkpoints and prematurely open up, is that we will start to see little spikes that might turn into outbreaks. Fauci's message at odds with President Trump, who insists the nation is much. ready Thank to you. get back to work. More than 82,000 people now dead in the U.S. from COVID-19, but Fauci cautioning that number could be higher. I just like to hear your honest opinion. Do we have the coronavirus contained? We don't. I think we're going in the right direction, but the right direction does not mean we have by any means total control of this outbreak. Trump recently boasting about testing, like noting the U.S. has tested a larger percentage of the population than South Korea. But Republican but Senator Mitt South Romney Korea. arguing. But you ignored the fact that they accomplished theirs at the beginning of the outbreak. While we treaded water during February and March, they have 256 deaths and we have almost 80,000 deaths. I, I find our testing record nothing to celebrate whatsoever. Fauci's testimony comes as 45 states are now moving to reopen, some without meeting federal guidelines. Arizona letting stay-at-home orders expire May 15th. Georgia now extending stay-at-home orders even after reopening businesses a few weeks ago. And in Los Angeles, the mayor likely extending their safer at home order until August. This is just as dangerous a virus today as it was when it arrived. Dr. Anthony Fauci added a vaccine is likely, though he doesn't expect one in time for the new school year in the fall. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. 438, 67 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA. Listen up, Hamilton fans. A recording of the hit Broadway musical with the original cast is coming home. We're going to tell you when you can watch it. And next dramatic video of a rescue in California after a couple drove 200 feet off the side of a cliff. And taking a look outside with live cam. Mike was just saying, you said that the government is saying they will likely postpone. Did you know the Thunderbirds? Anyway, we're watching the weather and trying to find out what's going to happen with the Thunderbirds today. So we're looking into it and we're going to keep you posted as we find out information. In your morning headlines, Border Patrol agents must now wear a mask at U.S. checkpoints. U.S. Customs and Border Protection mandated masks for its workforce within the last week. Agents must also have to wear protective gear when they're processing migrants in any time where they can't maintain social distancing. Still, some say the change is not enough. The union or a union says there's a lack of testing employees for coronavirus, along with a lack of medical screening of travelers. Law enforcement around the country won't have to travel to Washington, D.C. to recognize National Police Week. A virtual vigil will be held in honor of police officers later tonight. The vigil can be viewed on the social media pages for the National Law Enforcement Officer Memorial Fund. 
The nonprofit says the names of 307 officers killed in the line of duty will be recognized. They will be added to the National Memorial in D.C. as part of tonight's service. Crews in California were called to rescue a couple after their vehicle went 200 feet down a hillside. Investigators say they don't know why the vehicle left the roadway, but it went down a cliff in an L.A. neighborhood late yesterday. Firefighters first pulled a 60-year-old woman from the vehicle. Then they used ropes to lift her into a waiting helicopter. She was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Crews then had to remove the roof of the car to get to a 60-year-old man. He was brought up the hillside and taken by ambulance to a hospital. And last check, he was in serious, rather serious, too critical condition. 442, still 67 degrees. Still ahead, Broadway star Nick Cordero continues to recover from the coronavirus. We're going to hear from his wife, who is speaking out about everything they've been through. And next, when it comes to keeping your kids' stuff clean during the pandemic, what are the safest household cleaners to use? We'll tell you which ones are the most effective. Welcome back, everybody. It is now 445. Broadway star Nick Cordero is out of a coma as he fights back from the coronavirus. This morning, his wife is talking about his recovery and what's next. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, Michael Strahan, one-on-one -on -one with Nick Cordero's wife, Amanda Klutz. You have some, an update on, on Nick's condition. So um, what's the new news? Cordero, who gained fame in Waitress and Bullets Over Broadway, has become one of the many public faces of the coronavirus, a battle his wife Amanda has documented on social media every step of the way. And this morning, news that the actor is finally awake and recovering. They always end it with, we just need that mental status. And it's just been this heaviness that's kind of held over us for this, for this time. And to get the news today that he is... You know, the doctor said, I think we can officially say he is awake. And I mean, that was just the best news you could hear. Michael Strahan's interview with Amanda Klutz is coming up only on Good Morning America. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Concerns about getting sick with COVID-19 have a lot of folks on a disinfecting spree. But heads up, parents, bleach and other chemical cleaners may not be best for your child's car seat. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains why and what manufacturers, manufacturers rather say you should use. We've been told to use bleach-based and other disinfectants on high-touch surfaces around the house. But when it comes to your child's car seat, experts say steer clear of harsh chemicals. When it comes to car seats, each component needs to be able to withstand high forces and repeated use in order to keep kids safe during a crash. So you don't want to use any cleaners or disinfectants that could compromise the seat's performance in any way. What should you use? Check your owner's manual, and if you don't have it, look for it online. Make sure it's okay to machine wash and dry the fabric seat cover. You don't want to ruin any fire retardant. But don't put the harness in the machine. It should be cleaned by hand. Most manufacturers say use a mild soap and water. Same with the plastic parts. And be sure to rinse slippery soap or oils off the buckles. And parent alert, 21,000 dressers popular in kids' rooms are recalled. They are unstable and can tip over onto a child if the furniture isn't anchored to the wall. This is the pre-pack four-drawer chest sold at online retailers, including Target, Overstock, and Amazon. The company will send you a free anchor kit. In the meantime, store the dresser away from children. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. 448. Let's check on the roadway, see how traffic is looking. Hopefully your job is going to be a little easier today than it was yesterday, Marcus. Well, we can hope. We can cross our fingers and get our lucky rabbit's foot out, although rabbit had four of them. That didn't help him any. As we take a look at the roadways, uh, still looking pretty good. So far, so good. It's quiet out there, and we hope to keep it that way. Let's take a look at TransGuide. This is I-10 Afrio, upper and lower levels of I-10, whether you're eastbound or westbound, look pretty good there. No problems through I-10 and Callahan. Then 604 Culotta, you can see east and westbound lanes, no problem. Even the connector ramp to eastbound Highway 151, still looking pretty good. No problems there, 37 at Jones Avenue. And then there's the interchange up on the northwest side, I-10, 410. So far, all is good. So we hope it stays that way. Thank you, Marcus.
Boy, that rain really came down, not just once yesterday. We had several rounds in spots. Yeah, in the morning we had some of the rain and then it started kind of tapering off a little bit. And then all of a sudden late morning, it was about uh, 10 30, 11 o'clock. I mean, everything. That's when the heavy rain started. We had some of those tornado warnings that were issued severe thunderstorms and it just and then it kind of died down. And then about dinner time, we had some more yep. of those cells fire up again. So and some folks, you know, this picture right behind me says, oh, some great rain. We picked up two tenths of an inch of rain officially out there at the airport and then you go just a few miles north of there and it was coming down literally in buckets. Uh, a lot of reports of a half a foot of rain, even a lot more than that uh, with some uh, localized amounts. But uh, yeah, it was nice to see the rain. Uh, we do have a chance for a couple of showers today. I, I kind of doubt we see anything uh, that's going to be kind of the, the widespread just a few showers here and there, maybe, but uh, out to the west. We'll talk more about that in a second. We do have clouds out there right now, and uh, going back to as far as the, uh, the rainfall, these are just some of the estimates on radar. There were some, you know, specific measurements, but just what uh, rainfall or what the radar estimated. And you go right into the northern portion of Bear County, and we're looking at, you know, four, five, six inches of rain. A lot of folks are reporting that this fell in seemed like basically the blink of an eye. Those storms were just opening up and this was up in toward Canyon Lake, even going up I-10 in toward Bernie, about two and a half, uh, maybe three inches worth of rain. Like I said, about two tenths of an inch out there at the airport. Temperatures right now, mid 60s, close to a normal low temperature right now. And humidity is it's there. It's not ridiculous, but uh, we are going to see a lot of humidity the next couple of days, and that's going to be feeding a mm, couple of showers. Like I said, maybe today, tomorrow, but then Friday and Saturday, a whole different story. So here's the computer model. And we've got this one it just has a few little showers around here. There's still leftover energy off to the east, which is why anything may pop up basically east of uh, 35 today. What we're going to have to watch out for, though, is well off to the west is some of those showers and thunderstorms trying to develop later on late this afternoon and then going into this evening hours. Now, the one thing you always have to worry about with some of those is they might kind of form into those nighttime storm complexes and that would continue to work their way across parts of the hill country. So that'll be something we definitely have to keep an eye on, but you got to watch it out there to the west later on today. And then um, as this computer model has most of those kind of dying down. Now there is the risk though that some of those could be on the strong to severe side. So basically along 35, there's the marginal risk for some of those storms to become severe. High winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats. Of course, you can't rule out a stray tornado, but it's not very likely in this situation. And then that risk does go up to a slight risk out there in uh, Edwards County and mainly Valverde County and further west from there. As far as rainfall estimates, just from this one computer model, so you can see it's kind of picking up some of these storms out there to dump some heavy rain in some of our western counties, and that would be in the overnight late to this afternoon, this evening, and in the overnight hours as those storms do tend to pop up. Then, like I said, we have to go in toward the weekend. So as far as the forecast today, going for 80 at noon, I'm going to call it partly cloudy skies. We'll still have a fair amount and basically some low clouds hanging around here up to about, uh, say, 5,000 feet or so, which does not bode well, I uh, wouldn't think, for the, uh, the Thunderbirds. So they're going to, as we were talking about off the top of the show, they're going to continue to assess the situation and may actually delay the flight. I think by the afternoon we see a bit more sunshine mixed in with the clouds. 88 for a high temperature. A shower can't be ruled out, mainly off to the east. It's not very likely, however. And we have those thunderstorms out to the west tonight, which are possible. Tomorrow, about the same situation. Then Friday, we're going to be seeing showers and thunderstorms developing, especially late. And then overnight into Saturday, uh, we have a... Right now, it looks like a fairly good chance for some heavy rain around here in the overnight hours and throughout to at least the first half of the day on Saturday. We'll still have some showers and storms Sunday, Monday, and then start to taper off on Tuesday. But Saturday, I think, is going to be another day that we're going to have to watch out for. So oh. it looks like if they're, you're going to do the yard work, there's a very narrow window here. Yeah, today and tomorrow. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pretty much it. That's it. 453, 68 degrees. Coming up next, more on a couple of new movies already setting theatrical release dates, even though most theaters aren't even open yet.
we still don't have an exact date for when theaters will reopen across the country, but the movie Unhinged is betting on July 1st. That's when the creepy Russell Crowe thriller about road rage will be released, moving up from its planned September 4th date. You better bring your A game. It's the first film from the new company Solstice Pictures, which wants to make Unhinged the first nationwide release since theaters shut down in March, beating Christopher Nolan and Warner Brothers Tenet by two weeks. Hawaii seems like a dream place to make a movie, and David Spade tells me it was pretty fantastic to shoot the comedy The Wrong Missy on Oahu. But when he got there, he learned he couldn't go in the sun. You forget, like, you can't be burnt in one scene and walk into the next scene and you're white and then you're burnt again. So we all had to stay away from the pool and all the fun stuff on our days off, which is ridiculous. Put that in my mouth now? Yeah, goes right in your mouth. The Wrong Missy is out today on Netflix. Hamilton is coming home. The recording of the Broadway musical with the original cast that was going to be in theaters later this year will instead stream on Disney Plus starting July 3rd. And hopefully you signed, sealed, and delivered your birthday card to Stevie Wonder. The legendary music star is 70 today, while Late Show host Stephen Colbert is 56. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens at ABC News, Los Angeles. 457, 68 degrees now. Still ahead on GMSA, the Air Force's Thunderbirds set to rumble across the skies of South Texas today. We'll have the latest on their projected flight path and any potential weather delays. Plus, would you work from home forever? More on a new move by Twitter that's allowing employees to stay home pretty much as long as they want. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this hour, the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds are set to roar across the skies of San Antonio today, and we sure hope it happens. But could weather be in the cockpit as well? It could be a problem. And city and county leaders are being criticized by the Texas Attorney General over their response to the pandemic. Outside with live cam, perhaps a break from the rain and then more of it back in the forecast. Mike will tell you when. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is May 13th. Thanks for being with us this morning. Our fingers are crossed that the weather's going to cooperate so the Thunderbirds can indeed fly over today. That, that's right. It may come down to the cloud deck and whether it's even worth the Thunderbirds time to fly over today, right, Mike? Yeah, rain's not really going to be an issue today. I mean, there could be a stray shower here or there and some storms well out to the west later on, but um, by early afternoon, they were scheduled to uh, come through town starting at about 1.20. There's still going to be clouds around here. Uh, we'll start to see some sunshine, but it's going to be kind of low clouds as well, so it may not be good enough for them to uh, to fly in. But of course, they're going to be assessing the situation right now. Temperature. We actually went up a couple of notches in the past hour, 68 degrees in town, 66 out there in Rock Springs. These numbers are close to normal lows. We were actually at our normal low last hour. Not much of a breeze to speak of. Good visibility. Dew point is it's up there. It's not ridiculously high and when you look at uh, dew points around the area it's still kind of tolerable but there's enough moisture in the air to you know help out with uh well, keeping these temperatures up and then some of this moisture is actually going to start to increase in the next couple of days and that's going to help to really squeeze out and it's going to get squeezed out and there is more rain down the road now, as far as today though like i said maybe just a shower or two very, very unlikely. Most of that would be well off to the east. Mold is on the moderate side. Grass and pecan are both low and throughout the day, mostly cloudy skies this morning, mid 60s. Now, I'm going to call it partly cloudy skies by later on this afternoon. But again, with those low clouds may not be good enough for uh, to put on a really good show with those uh, with the Thunderbirds flying overhead. Upper 80s and a shower or two off to the east is possible. About the same situation tomorrow. By the way, tonight or in the early evening hours, there could be some of those thunderstorms trying to develop well out to the west. Um, even off the mountains of Mexico. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Probably cloudy skies tomorrow. Again, about the same as today. Upper 80s, probably a little bit warmer. And then Friday, we're going to start to see more showers and thunderstorms develop, especially later on Friday. And then overnight into Saturday, there is a very good potential for some heavy rain around here, some strong thunderstorms as well, and even leftover rain going into the first part of next week. We'll talk about that coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Any problems out there, sir? Well, so far, so good, Mike. We're off to a great start right now with no accidents on the highways. I-10 at the Y so far, no problems there. Let's move over to 151 at 410. You can see travel in both directions on uh, Highway 151 and 410 looking pretty good. No problems there in the downtown area. 35 at Flores and then 21 at Sprucewood Lane so far, no issues there. Leslie. 
Well, happening today during this time, our frontline workers are vital. That's why the U.S. Air Force is saluting South Texas workers. The Thunderbirds are scheduled to fly over San Antonio today. Sarah Costa joins us live from home. And Sarah, the Thunderbirds posted an update. Today's flight might, could be put on hold, but we're hoping it happens, right? Of course, we are hoping it happens so our frontline workers can be saluted by the United States Air Force. But like you and Mike were talking about earlier, you know, the cloud coverage could potentially delay this flight or even postpone it. That's what the Thunderbirds posted on their Facebook page yesterday. But if all goes well and the weather does play nice, uh, today's flight. We'll have several areas where you'll be able to watch the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds. The flyover will start over if it actually does happen at 1.20 this afternoon. And the spectacle will last around 30 minutes as the six high-performance aircrafts flying in precise formation zoom across the city, all in thanks to our frontline workers. Residents along the flight path can expect a few moments of jet noise as the aircraft pass overhead, there are about a dozen locations where you'll be able to see the Thunderbirds. Here are some of them. The Alamo Dome parking lot, HB Plus parking lot at 281 in Evans, McAllister Park, Pearsall Park, Hardburger Park. Now, Air Force officials are asking residents to maintain social distancing while watching and not to gather in large groups. If you are able to stay at home and see the flight, you are encouraged to do so. Now, you can go to ksat.com to see the actual flight pattern and also the full list of all those viewing locations and again just stay with us here on gmsa and ksat.com and we'll keep you updated if the thunderbirds will fly today they'll be postponed or potentially delayed live from home i'm sarah costa ksat 12 news morgan leslie Thanks for the update, Sarah. In his latest letter, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is accusing the city of San Antonio and Bear County of overreaching in their response to the pandemic. Specifically, he spoke about how local officials need to change how they've dealt with places of worship, masks and businesses. Paxton said, quote, I trust that local officials will act quickly to correct any orders that unlawfully conflict with Texas law and Governor Abbott's executive orders. Local leaders in the city attorney are defending their own orders and say they've always been in line with the governor. Fact is, our orders have been in compliance with the governor from day one. Our view is our orders, our local orders, have been consistent with the governor's order. And to the extent we need to clarify language or add language that, that makes that even more abundantly clear, we'll do that. But we're, we're not out to pick any fights. Do you feel like hey, hey, he picked the fight, not us. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make that real clear. The city and county say they are preparing a written response to the AG's office. Paxton also sent similar letters to Dallas and Travis County, as well as the city of Austin. Let's take a look at the cases of COVID-19 in our surrounding counties. Hayes County is now reporting 211 cases. Guadalupe County just under 100. Comal County has 68 and Medina County has 45. Wilson County reporting 36 cases. We're also tracking all of this on ksat.com. Meanwhile, plans are being mapped out for criminal district court proceedings to resume in Bear County, but it's a slow, methodical process. They've been shut down since March after jury service was put on hold due to the pandemic. Here's Paul Venema with where and how the reopening will begin. These remote hearings have been the norm for about two months now, but that's about to change. Administrative Judge Ron Renhell is proposing guidelines for conducting in-person, non-essential hearings. Something that is not going to resolve a case, something where a defendant is on bond, something where there is a civil type case where it's just a hearing and it's not going to be anything that relates to um, some sort of safety issue. No firm date yet, Ron Hell said. Too many moving parts. Start very slow, make sure the protections are in place. Um, we're consulting with Metro Health to make sure that we comply with everything that they request. That means masks and social distancing. Though the hearings will be in person, Ron Hell said remote hearings are likely here to stay. The idea is if you're able to communicate through electronic means such as this, we should continue to do so. What kind of pushback, if any, are you getting from the attorneys involved? Is, is, is everybody on board with your plans at this point? You have all different types of mentalities, all sorts of philosophies on, on how to ramp back up. Um, if there's, any push, if there's any pushback, it's not much. He said everyone is concerned about the backlog in the court system and anxious to get moving, even if it's slowly. Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News. 
509, 68 degrees. Still ahead, we're going to tell you more about a special kind of Nest camera and how it's being used to help take care of COVID-19 patients. Do you have a graduate in your family, Krispy Kreme, giving out a tasty way to celebrate? More on that coming up next. And taking it outside with live cam. Boy, we needed that rain yesterday. We've got more chances in the forecast. Michael have details. Welcome back. It is now 512. In your morning consumer headlines, here's your chance to play astronaut while still social distancing. SpaceX posted a video on Twitter announcing its new space docking simulator. The online simulator puts you in the cockpit of their new Crew Dragon spacecraft. Mike's already on it. Once there, it's your job to dock the capsule at the International Space Station. The simulator reportedly uses the same interface as SpaceX's real crew. It looks difficult, but they do have instructions to help. The simulator can be played for free. The website is iss-sim.spacex.com. By the way, the real Crew Dragon will launch to the International Space Station next week. Toyota is rolling out a special edition of its popular Prius to celebrate the car's 20th anniversary. Toyota will produce exactly 2020 of these special anniversary models, which are loaded with features. Unique to the Prius special anniversary edition are 2020 Insignia key fobs and floor mats, as well as a color-keyed rear, rear spoiler. A release date for the vehicle has not been announced just yet. The 2001 Toyota Prius became the world's first production hybrid car. In the 20 years since Toyota introduced the Prius, more than 6 million units have been sold. Who needs a cap and gown when you've got free donuts? Krispy Kreme has a deal for graduating seniors. The company has a special graduate dozen that will be available all next week. It includes a special selection of donuts. And on Tuesday, grads can get it free. All they have to do is prove their status as graduating seniors. That can be done in a variety of ways, of course, including showing your cap and gown or any class of 2020 apparel, like a class ring, graduation announcement as well. The deal is good for students graduating high school or college. It's time to eat the donuts. Yes, let them eat donuts. 514, 68 degrees. Still ahead, a new music cover featuring musician Jeff Beck and actor Johnny Depp is being released today. We'll tell you more about the duo's latest musical project. And up next, more on why Twitter says it will now allow employees to work home from home forever. At Sprint, we understand saving money for your family is now more important than ever. That's why we're offering our best unlimited deal. Switch and get four lines of unlimited for just $100 a month. That's right, four lines for 100 bucks. If that's not enough, we're throwing in four Samsung Galaxy phones on us. And now, Sprint customers enjoy expanded roaming access on the T-Mobile network. Shop from the comfort of your home at Sprint.com or come see us in our stores. I'm 53, but in my mind, I'm still 35. That's why I take Osteo Biflex to keep me moving the way I was made to. It nourishes and strengthens my joints for the long term. Osteo Biflex plus vitamin D for immune support. In these uncertain times, it has never been more important to maintain a clean home. At Stanley Steamer, we've added a new cleaning spray that disinfects hard surfaces and deep cleans carpet and upholstery. We believe in doing things the right way. That's why we've been your trusted partner in clean for over 70 years. 517, one of the top health systems in the country, now using Nest cameras to monitor coronavirus patients. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, a new high-tech way to monitor coronavirus patients. Workers in New York's Mount Sinai Health System are using Google's Nest cameras to watch over the critically ill. Hospital officials say it allows them to cut down on the use of personal protective equipment, and they say it reduces the time that staff spends with those patients who are seriously ill. Uber is reportedly working on a plan to buy Grubhub. The move would place it under the same umbrella as rival Uber Eats and put them ahead of DoorDash to become number one in the market. According to Bloomberg, the deal could be reached as early as this month. Working from home could soon become permanent for more Americans. Twitter says it's allowing many employees to work from home, quote, forever. The company's offices are closed through summer. It's now increasing employee allowances for home supplies. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 518. Let's check the roadways once again. Marcus, what's happening? Still looking pretty good out there. So we're over at 35 Benzingo and you see no problems there. Moving on to I-10-410, the interchange up on the northwest side. So far, no problems. So no delays at this point. All travel times are 
well within the normal travel time zones or travel time uh, range, so no problems there. Tweedo and Grayson looks pretty good. And then Tenant Crossroads are starting to get some increases in the traffic, both on the eastbound and the westbound lanes. So hopefully your commute will be a pleasant commute this morning. Yes, we hope so. Well, we had big storms in the area yesterday, and we yeah. knew that at some point we'd start to see some pictures trickle in that are pretty, pretty cool. That's yeah, a really uh, cool one behind you. We have the rain pictures. This is a, somebody who was driving over toward Houston, and now again, don't take pictures while you're driving. But uh, I've never seen one that bright. No, that's that is amazing looking, and usually you don't see it kind of touching the ground. But uh, it's a great shot there. Beautiful picture. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, yeah, some folks picked up um, a good half a foot of rain up around a good chunk of Kamau County, up around Canyon Lake, and even in parts of uh, Northern Bear County, a few inches, only two tenths of an inch of rain officially out there at the airport. There is more to come, though, especially Friday night and Saturday. We're looking at the potential for some really, really heavy rain around here. Temperatures are in the uh, mid and upper 60s. We actually went up a couple of degrees in the past hour, so we're close to to a normal low temperature right now and the humidity is still okay. It's not oppressively humid, but we will be seeing the humidity go up over the next couple of days and that's going to help to feed some of these uh, showers and thunderstorms. Now there is the chance for a couple of showers primarily off to the east today. There's still a little bit of leftover disturbance of that uh, system that moved through here yesterday and we're going to be seeing some sunshine mixed in today. Now as far as cloud cover, we are going to see kind of broken clouds, especially by noon and early afternoon. But the problem, I think, uh, is going to be the fact that they are lower clouds. And so that's why, as we were talking about, the Thunderbirds are going to continue to assess the situation and maybe a little bit too too cloudy for them to really put on a, a good flyby. Anyway, back to uh, what's going to be going on tonight. Some of these showers and thunderstorms developing out there off the mountains of Mexico and coming into our western counties. And some of those could be packing a bit of a punch, too. So that's why there is the slight risk for severe weather out in our western counties. And then the marginal risk pretty much west of I-35 for some of those stronger thunderstorms. And that would be in the evening hours tonight. Now, some of those may try and hold together. That's a lot of times what we have to watch out for is one or two of those trying to hold together in the nighttime hours and then working its way off to working their way to the east. So that'll be something obviously we watch later on tonight and see if that's going to be the case tomorrow morning. Now, Going into uh, tomorrow afternoon, a couple of showers. It's going to be about the same situation as today. I think that's kind of maybe does a little bit of a broad brush. And then this uh, computer model is trying to get a good batch of rain to come in here Thursday night. Then on Friday, we'll have a few showers around here, but especially Friday night, we're going to be watching out for some of the heavy rain to develop, and that's going to start to work its way across the area into Saturday morning. Heavy rain is a very good possibility uh, overnight, Friday night into Saturday, and throughout about the first half of the day on Saturday, maybe some stronger thunderstorms as well. So it looks like there could be a fairly decent flooding potential on Saturday, even going through the day, and then we'll start to clear out a little bit, although still a few uh, thunderstorms uh, scattered about the area on Sunday as well as on Monday, maybe even Tuesday. So we've got a definitely a rainy period around here. 80 degrees today at noon. I'm going to call it partly cloudy skies. We'll still we'll see kind of broken clouds. Problem, like I said, is going to be that they are going to be on the, the lower side. And then later on this afternoon, a high temperature of the 88. A shower or two, especially off to the east, can't be completely ruled out. And tomorrow about the same situation. Now, of course, uh, late this afternoon, this evening, we'll watch those thunderstorms potentially build out in our western counties over there around Valverde County in the Rio Grande Valley. Like I said, tomorrow's about the same situation as today. And then Friday, showers, thunderstorms really begin to fire up, and especially Friday night into Saturday. So that's the day we're really going to have to be uh, watching out for very heavy rain around the area. And still some, uh, some rain Sunday, Monday, and maybe lingering Tuesday. That's quite the rainy pattern. It is. It is. But yeah, Saturday's got kind of worried about Saturday. All right. Yeah. Okay. And we're still super hopeful the Thunderbirds can still do their flyover today. Fingers crossed. And Fingers. make sure you download the KSAT weather app if you don't have it. Right. 523, 68 degrees. Up next in your morning spotlight, more on how a new documentary featuring the music scene in New Orleans is helping artists affected by the pandemic. Actor Johnny Depp and guitar legend Jeff Beck have released a music video for their first single together. CNN's Rick Damagella has that story and more in your Hollywood Minute. New Orleans.
Mississippi River. This is where this music jazz was created. The documentary Up From The Streets, New Orleans, The City of Music is having a virtual release starting Friday. A portion of the proceeds from the video on demand ticket will be donated to the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Foundation's COVID-19 relief fund supporting Louisiana musicians. to Young duets with Julian Lennon. The former Stick singer shares vocals with Lennon on the song To the Good Old Days from his upcoming album 26 East Volume 1, which drops on the 22nd. Yes, that is Jeff Beck and Johnny Depp covering John Lennon's Isolation. The song marks the first single from the duo's musical collaborations and is available on all streaming and download services. They first performed the song at Eric Clapton's Crossroads Guitar Festival in 2019. Rocking out in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Yeah, I would have heard Johnny Depp could sing, but it's the first time I'd heard it before. It just is, sounds weird to say this, yeah. that he's doing the, the, uh, an album, I mean, the song. It's bizarre. 527, 68 degrees. But it's Johnny Depp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Still ahead in our next half hour, a new prediction is giving a grim future look at how many Americans will die of COVID-19 by August. We'll take a look at the numbers. And we're hearing from some Americans who are showing symptoms of COVID-19, but still can't get a test. And several local churches are slowly starting to reopen. We'll tell you what guidelines places of worship have to follow. Five thirty. Good morning. It is Wednesday, May 13th. Thank you for being with us this morning. Halfway through the week. Boy, those were some big storms we had yesterday. Any more in the forecast today, Mike? Will those be a factor at all, perhaps, for the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds? Not rain. It looks like it may be the clouds that aren't going to break up enough for them and kind of low clouds still hanging around here early afternoon. We don't have anything. I can't rule out a shower, especially off to the east later on today, uh, but they're going to be very few and far between at best. Most of us are not going to see anything as far as any rain today. Now, there may be a few thunderstorms trying to develop well out to the west later on this evening. We'll talk more about that coming up in in the uh, the long weather segment temperatures right now mid 60s we're about at our normal low temperature uh, maybe a degree or two above that humidity is okay this morning it's not oppressively humid we're going to be up to 80 today at noon a lot of clouds this morning they'll start to break up somewhat but again they're going to be kind of low clouds um, three four or five thousand feet right around there so that's probably not the best like we said, the Thunderbirds are going to be assessing that situation, but probably not the best for them uh, doing their flyover. 88 for a high temperature today, and again, some of those thunderstorms well out to the west. Now, tomorrow's going to be a lot like today. Then we'll start to see more rain fire up on Friday. Friday night, Saturday, that's a little worrisome as far as uh, some potential for very heavy rain on Saturday. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Getting ready to hit the roads. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Anything big going on, sir? Nah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's official traffic terminology. Nah. Cool. Right now, as we take a look at the roadways, not too much uh, as far as things that should slow you down once you head out there on the highways. Uh, highways looking pretty good. 281 410 up there by the airport. No problems on the connector ramps or down there 410 eastbound and westbound. Then 21 and Grayson, north and southbound lanes still. Running smoothly up on the northeast side, no problems. And 410 at Fredericksburg Road, so far, smooth sailing. Leslie? More than 82,000 people in the U.S. have reported to have died from coronavirus, according to Johns Hopkins University. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, updated modeling shows an increase in fatalities over the next few months. 147,000 COVID-19 deaths by August. That's what the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation at the University of Washington is predicting for the U.S., 10,000 more than its projection earlier this week. States have relaxed early. Uh, people have heard the message. They've gotten out. They've become more mobile. They're having more contact. And we're seeing the effects uh, already of that transition. California's state university system is canceling most in-person classes through the fall semester. And Los Angeles County might keep stay-at-home orders for the next few months, but ease some restrictions. We're learning to live with it. We are not moving beyond it. But it's important not to overreact and not to underreact. Others, including President Trump, want restrictions eased in hopes that it'll help the economy recover. Arizona is ready to welcome pro sports back 
minus the fans. Major League Baseball, the NBA, the NHL, the NFL, uh, MLS uh, are all able to participate and play in the state of Arizona after May 15th. But most Americans still have concerns about the virus. According to a CNN poll conducted by SSRS, 58% say they feel uneasy about returning to their regular routines. 41% say the opposite. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Also making headlines this morning right now, the most expensive time to buy stocks in 20 years time. That's despite all the financial problems caused by the pandemic. U.S. stock market stands 4% higher now compared to a year ago. Analysts say you would just have to go back to before the burst of the dot-com bubble to see similar conditions. The S&P is up 31% since March 23rd and is now trading at 22.5 times projected earnings. Some experts are warning this could set the stage for a major setback in the stock market. Former Watergate prosecutors are urging the Justice Department not to dismiss the Michael Flynn case. In legal memos, 16 former prosecutors laid out the legal footing they believe the judge has in order to reject a dismissal, request, and sentence Flynn. Flynn was President Trump's former national security advisor who pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI about his communications with Russia. Flynn's legal team is pushing back and urging the judge to dismiss the case immediately. You may or may not have noticed, but prices at the grocery store are on the rise. They're increasing at the highest rate since the 1970s. ABC's Inez de la Cuatera has that story. This morning, sticker shock at the supermarket. Last year at Memorial Day, our hamburger price was $3.99 a pound. It's going to be $5.99 a pound this year. Grocery prices jumping by more than 2.5% since April, the biggest one-month bump in nearly 50 years. People are staying home, they're not going out anymore, and so there's a, a big increase in regards to sales in grocery stores. Prices of mealtime staples like poultry rising by more than 4%, ground beef up almost 7%, while eggs skyrocketed by 16%. And experts warn the cost increases likely won't end soon. Consumers can expect price increases. And so you'll see anywhere from 2 to 4 percent probably for the remainder of the year. It comes amid new woes for one of the nation's biggest pork suppliers. Tyson's Food revealing that more than 200 employees have tested positive for coronavirus at a company plant in Nebraska, while a facility in Maine is dealing with a second outbreak just one week after reopening. Those closures, just one part of the stress the pandemic is putting on our food supply. The Food Industry Association also points to new safety protocols and supply chain issues contributing to cost increases. Adding to the price problem, stores facing huge demand are foregoing weekly sales and specials, so no discounts for customers. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. 537, 68 degrees. Still ahead, we're going to break down some of the new guidelines local churches will have to follow as they reopen to congregations. Up next, closer look at the science labs across the country racing to find a vaccine while trying to ramp up coronavirus testing. We're hearing from Americans who are showing symptoms of COVID-19 but still cannot get a test. And we're taking you outside with live cam, hoping those clouds clear up so the United Air Force, the United States, I should say, Air Force, Thunderbirds can fly over the Alamo City. Welcome back. 540 Science Labs across the country are racing to find a vaccine while trying to ramp up testing. We are hearing from Americans who still can't get a test. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the details. I just feel this crushing just constant weight and it was hard to breathe. Stacey O'Brien is one of many Americans who wants a coronavirus test but can't get one. The Massachusetts resident is convinced she's infected, but doctors told her she can only get tested if her symptoms worsen. They point blank said to my face, unless it gets worse and you spike a fever, like you're kind of, that's what it is. <laughs> President Trump Monday declared the country has prevailed on testing, but some experts say the U.S. needs to test up to 30 million people every day to get the economy back to normal, far fewer than the 338,000 daily tests the country currently averages. I just think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's still a lot of work to be done to be sure the right people are getting the right testing at the right time. 
Some governors are now signing up legions of contact tracers to identify people who came into contact with confirmed COVID-19 patients. This week, Johns Hopkins launched a five-hour course online to teach people how to be a tracer. New Jersey is hiring at least 1,000 of them. We're going to have to use contact tracing unlike it's ever been deployed before. And now, an inside look at Project Lightspeed, what pharmaceutical giant Pfizer is calling its race to produce a vaccine. At the company's lab in Michigan, a major investment for a product that's yet to be proven effective. Dozens of scientists and engineers are designing an assembly line to fill and package a vaccine once it's developed. The company began human trials last month and hopes to deliver millions of doses in the fall. That was ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi reporting. Right now, it is 542, 68 degrees. Coming up next, what you need to know before you head to church this weekend and the guidelines that places of worship are now having to follow. 544, now that churches in the Archdiocese of San Antonio have gotten the word they can reopen next week, local churches have received guidelines they must go by. Tiffany Huertas met with a priest from Christ the King Catholic Church on the west side who shows us how he's adjusting to the changes. There are so many protocols now. I think this is a new chapter for all of us. Today, Father Praveen Lacassetti received new guidelines from the Archdiocese of San Antonio about how to safely reopen Mass to the public. Keeping uh, every precaution in its place to make sure that everybody is safe. During the pandemic, Christ the King Catholic Church located on the west side has been closed. Mass has been live streamed and the pews are filled with pictures of church members. Father Lacassetti says they have been preparing for their reopening. Pre-COVID, could easily hold 300 people. We can only accommodate 25% of it, means almost 65 people. He says they will be constantly cleaning the building and disinfecting the pews after every mass. They will no longer be using printed material. Instead, they will display songs on projector screens. Face mask is mandatory for everyone who is entering. Father Lacassetti says they even created a COVID-19 task force with about 20 people from his church who will be making sure people are staying safe and have all the supplies they need. The mayor of San Antonio says while there's still people who are at higher risk of severe illness from COVID-19. I hope churches and businesses also advise them that if they are in those categories, it might behoove them not to participate in all the activities. Keep doing live streams for those folks who may not be able to come to the services. Father Lacassetti says they will continue to live stream. I'm going to continue this because not right away all people can come back, especially with some Elderly people you know, who have some health issues, they cannot come back and get exposed. I'm Tiffany Huertas. To see more stories like this, check out KSAT News at 9, Monday through Friday. Well, vacation plans slowly returning to normal in Florida very slowly. City Walk at Universal Orlando Resort is opening for limited operations tomorrow. Universal says people can enjoy the restaurant and shopping area from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Guests must wear face coverings to get their temperature checked. Universal says that theme parks and hotels will stay closed through the rest of the month, if not longer. Well, the skateboarding video game franchise that defined the genre is getting a massive overhaul. On his 52nd birthday, skateboarder Tony Hawk used Twitter to announce Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. One and two, they're being remastered. The games will retain their full rosters of skaters, but the original pixelated graphics won't be part of the package. Instead, players will experience updated 4K graphics on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Some new tricks are also being added to the game, which is slated for release September 4th. It is the first new entry in the series in five years. Tony Hawk, 52, and still making tricks happen. Ah, good for him. I, have you ever ridden the Tony Hawk ride? I think it's at um, Fiesta, Texas. I believe I have. It's like a little roller coaster mm -hmm. thing. It's fun. It is kind of cool. Yeah. 547 right now, exactly 548. Marcus, how is it looking on the roadways? Well, we do have a major accident. This is a rollover accident that we have. Uh, it's just going to be uh, just east of 35 on Eisenhower. Eisenhower right there by Midcrown. So watch out for a number of emergency vehicles responding to that rollover accident. Now, as we take a look outside through Transguide, earlier this was a crystal clear shot, but now I-10 and Callahan, just a couple of little spots there on the lens, making some starburst effects for the lights. Yeah, when Marcus mentioned that and then got 
radar kind of zoom. Most of it looked like ground clutter, and there may be just a couple little speckles. Little sprinkles out there. Oh, yeah, that's not yeah, my favorite there. terminology. Closer to downtown, the, the street lights are illuminating a pretty solid cloud deck right now, which is not a good sign for the Thunderbirds at this at this particular moment. Right. But as Even, we, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. What were you gonna I was going to say, as we're talking about weather, let's not forget about our four-legged friends. Oh, yes. yeah, forgot about that. We'll talk yep. more about that in a second. Here's a look at some of the uh, San Antonio Humane Society shelter pets that are up for adoption. This is a Lena, female terrier pit bull mix. Oh, look at you, boo, you, boo, boo. That's you have to do that when you see dogs. She's ready for walks and prefers to be around calm dogs. She do a fantastic in a home where she can continue her positive enrichment activities. There's Ova. She's a domestic short here. One year old. Ova has such a beautiful coat. Super sweet and gentle. Look at that. Oh, smiling. Humane Society also wants to remind everyone their emergency fund, Amazon wish list, no contact adoption process. To donate, check out sahumane.org slash COVID-19. You can also donate needed items via their blue bin located outside the shelter's front doors at 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226. 7461. Give them a call for more information. Again, there's Amazon uh, wish list. Great couple of clicks, and they get exactly what they need. Looks like it's trying, my imagination, trying to lighten up just a little bit. We've got plenty of clouds out there, as we were just talking about. And as far as temperatures, we are at 68 degrees as of right now. I want to check something on my computer very quickly. Pardon me one second. And there is uh, plenty of humidity out there this morning with the uh, dew point temperatures that are definitely running on the uh, well you know it's not oppressively humid out there but it is definitely humid enough and this is what it looked like talk about cloud cover this is uh, yesterday when those uh, clouds started rolling in there beautiful view of the uh, tower of the americas as well as the uh, the alamo dome right there and had the wrong show popped up on my computer sorry about that back to yeah it looks like you can almost see a little bit uh, trying to lighten up somewhat out there and as far as radar here's what i was talking about all this is ground clutter around the radar site and then all of a sudden just a couple little speckly showers popped up there so don't be surprised if there is one or two little uh, specks of rain this morning but that's going to be the exception rather than the rule. Now, yesterday, of course, all of a sudden, you know, we had some of the rain in the morning and then late morning, right around noontime. And then again, about dinner time, these storms started popping up and these are just radar estimates. Um, some of the ground totals were even more than that, but you know, we're looking at a swath of about a half a foot of rain throughout a good portion of uh, Kamau County up around Canyon Lake and even in toward San Marcos north of there. And of course, there were a couple of tornado warnings that uh, popped up yesterday as well. There could be some uh, stronger storms out to the west. More on that in a second. These temperatures again, uh, close to normal readings as of right now. Humidity. Dew points are in the mid 60s, low to mid 60s, so that's not bad. You kind of notice the humidity a little bit more. There could be a couple of sprinkles around the area, mainly off to the east later on today. And then this evening, we've got to watch out those storms off to the west. Those could actually pack a pretty good punch out there. As a matter of fact, there is the slight risk for severe storms out in our extreme western counties, Edwards, Valverde County, and then the moderate, excuse me, marginal risk uh, from about uh, 35 off to the west. Then jumping ahead into the future, Thursday, Friday, we've got a couple of showers around here. This model's trying to get kind of a wave of rain moving through late Thursday night, but it's Friday evening and then into Saturday when we're going to start to see some of these heavier downpours around here. And that's going to be the situation in through the day on Saturday. So good potential for some heavy rain on Saturday. And that's uh, something we're definitely going to be keeping an eye on. 80 today at noon. I'm calling it partly cloudy skies. Still going to be um, some broken clouds out there, but I think the big problem is the fact that they're going to be lower clouds, which may not bode well for the, uh, the Thunderbirds flyover. 88 degrees for a high temperature today. A couple of showers mainly off to the east are possible, although not very likely. And then we've got those thunderstorms well off to the uh, west that we're going to keep an eye on if those should happen to develop out there around, uh, say, Valverde County in the Rio Grande Valley. Tomorrow about the same as today, Friday. More showers and storms are going to be uh, popping up around here. And then Friday night, Saturday, that's something we're really going to have to keep an eye on as far as the heavy rain and strong storms on Saturday. Sounds like not the weekend to necessarily do outdoor things. No, and then more rain is going to be possible Sunday and even Monday. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. 553, 68 degrees. Coming up next, more on a man who is trying to set the Guinness World Record for the fastest wheelbarrow.
And here are the fastest look at your lottery numbers. Pick three, 0, 062, Fireball 2, Daily 4, 6425, Fireball 6. Cash 5 numbers 5, 12, 14, 21, 27. And we have Mega Million 7, 16, 27, 44, 52 with a bonus ball of 5, or a Mega Ball of 5, and a Mega Plier of 5. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, Dr. Anthony Fauci's warning to lawmakers the potential dangers of opening up the country too soon. The reaction this morning and Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti is with us live as his city talks about the possibility of stay at home orders well into summer. You'll see all of it right here on Good Morning America. With more elective surgeries picking up, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says the need for blood donations is growing more and more every day. Over the last week, the center has seen a 40% increase in demand for blood from hospitals across the city. It's not just important to schedule an appointment, but to stick to the appointment time as well. If you are still able to donate safely, you can right now, even during the pandemic. Each of their centers taking precautions to keep everyone protected. More information on SouthTexasBlood.org. The man you're about to meet already holds the Guinness World Record for the fastest shed. Now the UK's Kevin Nix is hoping to do the same in a garden wheelbarrow of speed. The British man has motorized a wheelbarrow. He built it using a donated Honda scooter and spare parts. Now trying to set and break that world record. Until he gets his shot, Nick says he'll set up for making people smile during the pandemic. 557, 68 degrees still ahead in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio. The pandemic has turned social distancing into a household phrase, but distance does not mean you can't be social. We have some ways you can enjoy others' company while staying at least six feet apart. Trans Guide, Marcus is back. I believe he just sent out a push alert for a rollover accident. We'll get updates coming up. The Thunderbirds are scheduled to fly over the Alamo City today, but could it be postponed? Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. We'll let you know the latest update on that in just a bit. Celebrating this year's heroes. Essential employees will be able to stop and smell the roses at the garden for free. Just ahead, more information on how you can score free tickets. And taking a look outside the live cam, we've got clouds. And it's in the forecast, and we have Thunderbirds scheduled to fly over today, as we just said. So we'll check in with Mike, see how weather is going to cooperate. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It's Wednesday, May 13th. Thanks for being with us this morning. That's the big question today. It's about 120, I think, when they're scheduled to fly over today. Are these clouds going to stick around, Mike? Well, we're going to start to see the clouds break up somewhat, but the problem being that they are lower clouds. You know, just where they fly, just what, probably about three, 4,000 feet or something like that. And that's where the cloud layer is going to be, the cloud ceiling. And so, yeah, they're still assessing the situation. If they were high clouds, it really wouldn't matter all that much. But, uh, yeah, keep your fingers crossed for that. Uh, we do have maybe a couple of sprinkles out there. Uh, about uh, half an hour ago, Marcus uh, showed a, on um, TransGuide, one of the cameras out by uh, Tenet Callahan, it looked like there was a couple little sprinkly showers there. And as you can see, most of this is ground clutter, but just a few little speckles that have moved on through there. So there could be a couple of damp spots on the roads, and that's pretty much about it. Now, the chance of rain, yeah, a shower or two, especially off to the east later on today, although the odds of rain are not that great. But then also further off to the west later on this evening could be some thunderstorms. Talk more about that a little bit later on. 66 in Helotus. We've gone up one degree here in town, 69 and uh, mid 60s out in portions of the hill country. And temperatures mid 60s or mid to upper 60s this morning. Lots of clouds and these clouds will begin to break up somewhat and we'll call it uh, partly mostly cloudy skies at noon, 80 degrees and then a bit more sunshine, not completely clear skies by any means today, unfortunately, but I think a little bit more sunshine as the uh, afternoon rolls on 88 for a high temperature today. Tomorrow's going to be about the same as today and then Friday rain starts to pick up again and then we're really going to have to be on the lookout for late Friday night into Saturday for some very heavy rain potential around here. Details on that coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo. So other than those couple little sprinkles on the northwest side, any accidents? Yes, we still have that one rollover accident. So we're moving up to the northeast side. This is Eisenhower right at mid crown. So that's going to be just east of 35. That rollover accident. We have a number of emergency vehicles uh, still clearing up that accident. So hopefully we'll be at everyone off the roadway and uh, at least moved off the, the main lanes until we so we can open up some of those 
lanes for traffic once again. 35 at 410 up on the northeast side, no problems there. Then 37 Jones north and south by lane still running smoothly at this point. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, sir. New this morning, three people, including a three year old child, are in the hospital after a wrong way collision. San Antonio police say it happened on southbound 35 near Southwest Military around 1130 last night. Here's video from the scene. SAPD says a man was driving the wrong way, crashed head on into a minivan filled with five people. They say a 47 year old woman who was driving in the van went to the hospital with a broken leg. The toddler went to the hospital with minor injuries and the man's in the hospital where he is being tested for DWI. That driver could be facing intoxication manslaughter charges. Well, this morning we are still waiting to learn the identity of a man who was shot and killed yesterday. Police say the shooting happened at the corner of West Commerce and North San Jacinto. The victim died while being rushed to the hospital. Several hours later, they arrested 25-year-old Justin Rodriguez in connection with the crime. Wilson County Sheriff says charges could be coming as early as this morning for a grandmother accused of starving and neglecting her grandchildren. Last week, the Wilson County Sheriff's Office found two kids, one and four years old, starved and covered in feces in a home in Stockdale. The grandmother, Samantha Foster, was arrested for a traffic violation. Sheriff's Office waiting here about the conditions of the children who went to the hospital before formally filing charges. The city of San Antonio is preparing a response to Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. Paxton sent a letter to Bear County, Travis County, and Dallas County criticizing the local safety ordinances for the coronavirus. The Attorney General says local orders go against Governor Greg Abbott's orders. However, Mayor Ron Nirenberg rather, and Judge Nelson Wolf said that they have made sure any mandates are in line with the governor. They also accused Paxton of trying to score cheap political points. Our Alicia Bonetta will have more on the responses in our next half hour. If you own property in the state of Texas, you will need to get it appraised for this year's tax season. Governor Abbott says he will not freeze property tax appraisals amid the pandemic. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says he's disappointed in the governor's order, saying the county and city of San Antonio asked for appraisals to be delayed two months ago. Instead, the governor told KSAP the local government should lower property tax rates instead. Well, plans are being mapped out for criminal district court proceedings to resume in Bear County, slow and methodically. They've been shut down since March after jury service was put on hold due to the coronavirus. Administrative Judge Ron Ronhell is proposing guidelines for conducting in-person, non-essential hearings. He says masks must be worn and there will be social distancing. They will also only apply to cases that cannot be held remotely, otherwise they will stay online. The House of Representatives unveiled their vision for the next round of coronavirus relief for Americans. The price tag close to $3 trillion. However, some senators are saying the stimulus will not pass on their watch. CNN's Karen Kafa has a look at what's in the bill and what parts are being debated. House Democrats have an ambitious plan for their next round of coronavirus relief. An estimated $3 trillion bill that, if enacted, would be the largest relief package in history. This would be the fifth piece of legislation related to the COVID-19 crisis, and Congress has already signed off on nearly $3 trillion in coronavirus-related spending. Previous efforts have been bipartisan acts, with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi working extensively with President Trump's Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin. But when it comes to another around. Mnuchin and White House economic advisors have said they want to wait to see the effects of the money that's already been spent. Pelosi says the American people can't wait. Everything in it is for the purpose of getting opening up our government, helping people in the meantime and defeating defeating this uh, virus. The Democratic proposal, which they are calling the HEROES Act, would include $200 billion for essential worker hazard pay, $75 billion for COVID-19 testing, tracing, and isolation efforts, and more direct payments to Americans of up to $6,000 per household, and $1 trillion to help state and local governments who have spent a lot of money to combat the crisis. Republicans who hold the majority in the Senate say the bill is dead on arrival in their chamber. So let me state the obvious. What Nancy Pelosi is proposing will never pass the Senate. Republicans have their own priorities for upcoming legislation. One is liability protection for businesses against lawsuits related to COVID-19 outbreaks. At that point, Democrats say, is a non-starter. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa.
Well, the much anticipated flyover of the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds is scheduled for this afternoon to honor local frontline workers, but could it be delayed or postponed again? Sarah Cust is live from home. So, Sarah, what's the latest word from the Thunderbirds about whether or not this flight will happen? Well, good morning, Mark and Leslie. That's the big question this morning. Will the Thunderbirds fly this afternoon or not? Like you guys were talking with Mike earlier because of maybe too many clouds in the skies, it might be delayed or postponed. That's what the Thunderbirds posted on their Facebook page late last night. But if that flight does happen, that's going to be happening at 1.20 this afternoon, and the spectacle will last around 30 minutes as the six high-performance aircraft flying in precise formation zoom across the city, all in thanks for our frontline workers. Now, residents along the flight path can expect a few moments of jet noise as the aircraft pass overhead. There are about a dozen locations where you can see the Thunderbirds. Here are a couple of them. Alamo Dome parking lot, HB Plus parking lot at 281 in Evans, McAllister Park, Pearsall Park, Hardburger Park, and of course you can find all those on our KSAT Facebook page. Now, Air Force officials are asking residents to maintain social distancing while watching and not to gather in large groups. Now, if you're able to watch the flight from home, you are encouraged to do so. Now, like we said earlier, if you go to KSAT.com, you can find all that flight patterns, all those locations, and of course, stay with us here on GMSA and online to get that update of whether or not the Thunderbirds will be flying today. Live from home, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you so much, Sarah. We're going to assume that they're going to fly and arrive around 120, but that changes. We, as you said, uh, Sarah, will let everybody know. 609, 69 degrees. Many of us have been working from home, and for Twitter employees, that could continue forever. San Antonio Botanical Garden starting a special promotion today. Essential workers across the city will be able to get in for free. And take you outside with live cameras. Waiting for the sun to rise and the clouds to clear so the Thunderbirds can fly. Welcome back. It is now 613. Many businesses in the San Antonio area are reopening and may want to hire you. And whether you're looking for full time or part time, here are a few that may interest you. The Levy Company looking for construction workers. Applicants must have a valid driver's license and experience working outdoors. Benefits are offered for this position. Mattress firm needs warehouse associate. Applicants must be 18 years or older, have strong communication skills and must pass a training course. Benefits are also offered for this job as well. Amazon looking for a part-time assistant manager to qualify. You must have a high school diploma, experience working under pressure. For more information on these jobs and many, many others, go to workintexas.com. And a thank you to frontline workers helping keep the city safe during the COVID-19 pandemic. That's what the San Antonio Botanical Garden aims to do. They are offering free admission today through May 19th to several groups. Alicia Bedetta live with more on who qualifies for free tickets. Alicia, good morning. Good morning. Well, this might sound really, really cheesy, but this is definitely the moment to stop and smell the roses and essential workers get to do it for free at the San Antonio Botanical Garden. So there are five gr groups who qualify for this free admission. And the biggest thing to note that these tickets will have to be reserved online. And then when you show up to the gate at San Antonio Botanical Garden, you will be required to show proof of employment so you can bring your badge. That will be really, really helpful. The San Antonio Botanical Gardens is celebrating 40 years this year and for the next few days they're going to be celebrating essential workers. If you're a firefighter, EMT, EMS, law enforcement, including state trooper, sheriff's deputy or local police, a hospital employee, work in public tra transportation, or if you're a city of San Antonio employee, this free entry to the San Antonio Botanical Garden applies to you. Again, reserve your ticket online. We do have a link on ksat.com. The coupon code you need to use is also listed on that article. It's HERO2020 and free admission for essential employees begins today and goes on until next Tuesday. That's May 19th. And again, reserve your ticket online because no tickets will be available at the door. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Well, if you know a college senior graduating this year, you can give them the shout out on KSAT.com. There is now a page where you can post graduation pictures and leave a message for your graduate. There's a link for every college or university in San Antonio. All I have to do is click to upload a picture. Just make sure it's one you took and not from a third party company. To find the gallery, head to KSAT.com and search graduation 2020.
And if telling them congratulations online isn't your thing, how about getting them some donuts? Krispy Kreme is offering a special graduate dozen of donuts available all next week. It includes a special selection of donuts. And on Tuesday, grads can get it for free. Just prove the status as a graduating senior by showing your cap and gown, 2020 apparel, or a graduation announcement. It's good for students graduating high school and college. I see Marcus diligently working on maps over there. Uh-oh, that could be a problem. What's happening on the roadways? Well, we've got a couple of things going on. Uh, let's go to the maps straight away. We're going to get to this accident here. Get reports of an accident uh, right there. 35410 in that vicinity actually off the road underneath one of those ramps. So uh, watch out for a number of emergency vehicles responding to this area. You may even see them as far back as 410 and Somerset. So just keep that in mind. Still clearing that rollover accident. Eisenhower at Midcrown. And then as we take a look outside through Transguide 1604 at Gulliver Road so far, still looking great in the I-10 Vance Jackson. No problems there. Thank you very much, Marcus. Some ominous storms in the area yesterday really got a lot of people's attention. I saw pictures of that flash flooding up near Canyon Lake. Yeah, that was amazing. Part of a gro parking lot and grocery store yeah, under uh, several inches of water. Some of the radar estimates are about a half a foot of rain. Some people wow. had said their rain gauges got a whole bunch more than that. And a lot oh, of people yeah. were saying it basically came all at once. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had storms yesterday morning and then they started to fire up again just before noon. And then even later on in the afternoon, it was adding to it. So uh, this is what it looked like in a great picture of the uh, Taj Mahal out there at Randolph and those clouds that were just hanging over that. And again, some areas barely got any rain. The airport, I don't mean to say barely, you know, two tenths of an inch of rain is, is fantastic. But then you go up north and it was just they're inundated with rain up there in northern Bear County and basically in Kamal County. And this is what it looks like right now. And this is not a good picture with these low clouds. If it was high clouds, it really wouldn't matter all that much as far as we're talking about the uh, Thunderbirds flying over, scheduled to fly over uh, later on early this afternoon. We have seen a few little speckles. Uh, there was uh, some dampness out there. Uh, Marcus saw it on the Transguide cameras over there by 10 at Callahan with some of these little sprinkles that moved on through. This is uh, just a lot of basically ground clutter around the radar site there. So if there are a couple of damp spots on the roads, just obviously take it easy, but that's kind of the exception rather than the rule. Temperatures are in the mid to upper 60s right now. We've actually warmed up a little bit in the past couple of hours. The humidity is still kind of being held in check. I mean, it's fairly high there in Castorville, but it's not ridiculously humid. It's going to be getting there over the next couple of days. The computer model does have the chance for a few scattered showers around the area one or two of them here and there, but I think the bigger concern is going to be out to the west then later on and in the early evening hours for some of these uh, stronger thunderstorms to develop out there and then we have to watch those to see if they decide to hold together in the overnight hours. This model has them kind of dying off, but there is that chance they could be holding together and also there's the slight risk for severe storms, high winds and hail being the biggest threats out there and that's Edwards County over toward Valverde County and then just west of 35 is the marginal risk. So there is that small chance that one or two of them could uh, move a little bit further to the east later on this evening. Now, going a little further into the future tomorrow, a couple of showers or this kind of I think does a little bit of a broad brush as far as rain chances tomorrow we may have a few of them, but it's also trying to get more of a uh, an organized area of rain to move through tomorrow night. Then on Friday, we have a better chance for showers and thunderstorms to get going, especially tomorrow, excuse me, Friday night and then into Saturday and the potential for heavy rain does exist. Friday night into Saturday and throughout a good chunk of the day on Saturday and even some stronger storms mixed in with that as well throughout the day on Saturday. So that's one day um, really going to have to be on the lookout for that. We'll still have a few showers and thunderstorms left over even on Sunday as well as Monday. We're not done with this pattern yet and, and perhaps even into Tuesday as well. Today, 80 at noon. Calling it partly cloudy skies. The clouds will begin to break up a little bit, but the problem is there are going to be some low clouds out there. So that's what the Thunderbirds are looking at as far as perhaps interfering with their flyover of town later on. And then I think we'll see a bit more sunshine later in the afternoon. Southeasterly wind 10 to 15 miles per hour. Again, a shower is possible, mainly off to the east. Not very likely, though. And then we've got to watch those thunderstorms out there in the western counties along the Rio Grande Valley. Tomorrow, about the same situation as today. 
It's going to be warm. It's going to be humid. A shower too, and then we'll see better rain chances on Friday. Showers, thunderstorms, and especially Friday night into Saturday. And we're going to have to watch out for that heavy rain threat and some strong thunderstorms on Saturday. They'll begin to taper off on Sunday, but Saturday is going to be a wet day. Uh -oh. well, we, we, so, yeah. we hope we see those planes later today. And we've already been remembering all, all our little flights with the Thunderbirds over the years. We we've found, all had individual chances to do it. We both found pictures of when we flew with the Thunderbirds. Yeah. And I posted it on my uh, Leslie Mouton Facebook page if you want to check them out. 20 years ago this month for me. Wow. Mine was. You uh, didn't have any pictures, so I couldn't include you. Sorry. I just posted mine. And mine was only six months before 9 11. But mine was a long time ago, but it was also the day I met Tony. Oh, husband. how about that? Yeah, he wasn't my pilot. He was flying A-10s at the time. But right. Yeah. He became your pilot. It, it, he became my pilot. <laughs> he, he certainly did. did. 621, 69 degrees. Broadway star Nick Cordero is out of a coma as he fights back from the coronavirus. This morning, his wife is talking about his recovery. What's next? Find out. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a Polar Pop. We are Circle K. It's starting to happen every day. People are surprising themselves. The moment they realize they can do more with less asthma. Thanks to Dupixent, the add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma. Dupixent isn't for sudden breathing problems. It can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and help prevent severe asthma attacks. It's not a steroid, but can help reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Don't use if allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor right away about signs of inflamed blood vessels, such as rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection and before stopping any asthma medicines, including oral steroids. Do more with less asthma. Talk to your doctor about Dupixent. In this morning's GMA First Look, Michael Strahan, one-on-one -on -one with Nick Cordero's wife, Amanda Klutz. You have some, an update on, on Nick's condition. So um, what's the new news? Cordero, who gained fame in Waitress and Bullets Over Broadway, has become one of the many public faces of the coronavirus, a battle his wife Amanda has documented on social media every step of the way. And this morning, news that the actor is finally awake and recovering. They always end it with, we just need that mental status. And it's just been this heaviness that's kind of held over us for this for this time. And to get the news today that he is, you know, the doctor said, I think we can officially say he is awake. And I mean, that was just the best news you could hear. Michael Strahan's interview with Amanda Klutz is coming up only on Good Morning America. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. There is a new high-tech way to monitor coronavirus patients. Workers in New York's Mount Sinai Health System are using Google's Nest cameras to watch over the critically ill. Hospital officials say it allows them to cut down on the use of personal protective equipment, and they say it reduces the time staff spends with those patients who are very sick. Uber is reportedly working on a plan to buy Grubhub. The move would place it under the same umbrella as rival Uber Eats and move the combined company ahead of DoorDash to become number one in the market. According to Bloomberg, the deal could be reached as early as this month. Working from home could soon become permanent for more Americans. Twitter says it's allowing many employees to work from home, quote, forever. Company's offices are closed through summer. It's now increasing employee allowances for home supplies. Your time now, 627, and it's 69 degrees. The Attorney General of Texas in the Bear County disagreeing over local shutdown orders. Alicia Beretta will tell us more about the reactions. And looking at the roadways as we had to break, we'll get an update on your morning commute from Marcus when we come back. A family of five driving in a van on I-35 struck by a wrong way driver in a head-on collision late last night. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. We'll let you know their injuries in just a bit. Bear County and San Antonio accused of exceeding their lawful authority when it comes to essential businesses and masks. That's according to the Texas Attorney General's office. The latest on this feud just ahead on GMSA.
Some of the nation's top health experts warning lawmakers that reopening too quickly could have serious consequences. I'm Inez de la in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. And outside with live cam, we need these low clouds to go away or break up significantly. We all want to see the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds and their tribute flyover for frontline workers in the battle against COVID-19. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is May 13th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Our fingers are crossed. It's bringing back memories of when we got to fly with the Thunderbirds. But we'll check in with Mike in just a minute. You were really busy at this time yesterday. And we're getting that busy again today. Three majors working right now, so we'll have the details of that in just a minute. Well, Mike, if you had to call it right now for a 120 arrival of the Thunderbirds, are we on the fence here? He's like, don't put me on the, don't, don't. Well, the, the, the problem being, I think clouds are going to start to break up, but they're very low clouds, as you can see in that picture. And mm -hmm. so, you know, that doesn't make for a, a really good show as far as they're concerned. So later on in the day. So what if everybody goes outside with an extension cord to fan and we all point <laughs> in the same direction? There great you go. great plan. <laughs> See, that's why we have Marcus here. He always has the, the great ideas. So, uh, yeah, they are going to break up somewhat, but it, like I was saying, it doesn't make for a really good show because these clouds are right about the, the altitude where the Thunderbirds like to fly. So, obviously, they're going to be assessing the situation. I think we'll see a bit more uh, sunshine or more breaks in the clouds by later on in the afternoon. As far as the uh, short term, though, and we saw a little bit of sheen on the road over there on the northwest side, 10 Callahan, and with a couple little sprinkles. This is some clutter around the radar site, but a couple little sprinkles have uh, shown up. That's been the exception. Uh, nothing else out there as far as uh, radar is concerned. Uh, so if there are a couple of damp spots on the roads, obviously just watch out for that. Temperatures are in the mid to upper 60s. We actually went up a couple of degrees in the past few hours. And uh, most of the cloudy skies, mid 60s, mid to upper 60s, partly cloudy, you know, the broken clouds out there. Uh, maybe not good enough for the Thunderbirds, unfortunately. Upper 80s. And a couple of showers are possible, mainly off to the east. And then also way out to the west, we're watching the potential for some thunderstorms to build, uh, say, Valverde County down along the Rio Grande. So got to watch that late this afternoon, this evening. And some of those could be on the stronger side. Tomorrow, about the same situation as today. Partly cloudy, a couple of showers, upper 80s. And then Friday, rain's going to start to pick back up. And we're really going to have to watch out for some heavy rain. There's a good potential for that. It's Friday night into Saturday, throughout most of the day on Saturday. More on the weekend forecast coming up. Time saver traffic right now. So you said still got some uh, pretty big accidents out there, right? Three major accidents still working right now. So let's get to this one down on the southwest side. Uh, we're looking right here in that area 35 410. This vehicle did leave the roadway. It's going to take a little bit longer to get that accident cleared up. Then we have another major accident. This is Culver Road uh, outside 410 right there at Old Grissom Road for a major accident. That one involving an 18 wheeler. And next we're going over to Eisenhower Mid Crown where that rollover hopefully will be clearing up here shortly. Now take a look outside through Transguide. 37 to Jones still looking pretty good with no problems over there by the airport 281 at 410. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, a woman and child were rushed to the hospital after being struck by a wrong way driver. This was on Interstate 35 late last night. It happened on the southbound lanes of I-35 at Southwest Military Drive. Sarah Costa joins us live from home with the latest on that. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Leslie. It was a family of five traveling in that minivan that was heading southbound on I-35 when they were hit head on by a wrong way driver. This happening late last night, just before 1130 on the south side when police say the family was struck by a man driving a gray sedan going the wrong way on the interstate. San Antonio police say a 47-year-old woman in the van was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. She also had a broken leg. A three-year-old was also taken to University Hospital with minor injuries, police say. The ages of the other family members in that van were not released. As for the man driving the car that hit them, police say he was also transported to University Hospital in serious condition. Police say they believe he was driving intoxicated and will have, a, and will have his blood drawn at the hospital for a potential DWI. The wrong way driver could also face charges of intoxicated assault. Live from home, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton says leaders of Bear County and the city of San Antonio impose unlawful restrictions on people and businesses amid COVID-19. A letter states that leadership overstepped their authority and their orders allegedly don't align with those of Governor Abbott. Our Alicia Beretta with live with more on this feud. Alicia. 
Mark, good morning. Well, the Attorney General's office has an issue with the local orders here in San Antonio, specifically with the mask order, what businesses are deemed essential here in our area, and also um, areas, so your religious temples, they also have an issue with that. But here, local leaders, they have responded, and they say that the local orders have always been in line with those of the governor. And in reference to the limits on the number of people allowed in a house of worship in Bear County, Deputy Attorney General Ryan Vassar wrote that the local order unlawfully tramples religious freedom and exposes the county and the city to legal liability. Vassar also stated that the local order for all essential businesses to provide masks to employees impose unlawful restrictions on businesses. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf called the claims in the letter false while Mayor Ron Nirenberg described the letter as a cheap political headline, city attorney Andy Segovia also defended their own orders. By the way, the mayor and I received a love letter uh, from the attorney general this today, uh, criticizing the safety measures that we have put in place. Our view is our orders, our local orders, have been consistent with the governor's order. And to the extent we need to clarify language or add language that, that makes that even more abundantly clear, we'll do that. But we're we're not out to pick any fights. Do you feel like hey, hey, he picked the fight, not us. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make that real clear. Dallas and Travis County, as well as the city of Austin, received similar letters from Paxton's office. And again, the city is saying that they have abided by these orders. They do fall in line with those of the governor. And right now, the plan for these local leaders is to write a written response back to the attorney, attorney general's office. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Testifying from home before a Senate panel, some of the nation's top health experts warned lawmakers that reopening too quickly could have serious consequences. Their message contradicts the president, who is uh, trying to convince the country to get reopened. ABC's, ABC's Ines de la Quatera has more from Washington. Good morning. The hearing was held by a video conference after three of the four witnesses came into contact with at least one White House staffer infected with COVID-19. And it comes as precautions are being taken inside the West Wing. Overnight, the nation's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, with a stark warning. It's my concern that if some areas, cities, states, or what have you, jump over those various checkpoints, and prematurely open up is that we will start to see little spikes that might turn into outbreaks. Fauci's message at odds with President Trump, who insists the nation is ready to get back to work. More than 82,000 people now dead in the U.S. from COVID-19, but Fauci cautioning that number could be higher. I think we're going in the right direction, but the right direction does not mean we have by any means total control of this outbreak. Trump recently boasting about testing, noting the U.S. has tested a larger percentage of the population than South Korea. But Republican Senator Mitt Romney arguing. But you ignored the fact that they accomplished theirs at the beginning of the outbreak. While we treaded water during February and March, they have 256 deaths and we have almost 80,000 deaths. I, I find our testing record nothing to celebrate whatsoever. Fauci's testimony comes as 45 states are now moving to reopen, some without meeting federal guidelines. Dr. Anthony Fauci added a vaccine is likely, though he doesn't expect one in time for the new school year in the fall. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. For morning headlines, Border Patrol agents now must wear a mask at U.S. checkpoints. Agents also have to wear protective gear when they're processing migrants and any time along the process where they can't maintain social distancing. But CBP union representatives say the change is not enough. They say there is a lack of medical screening for travelers. College students in California may not be heading back to campus this fall. University of California says its campuses are not likely to fully reopen for in-person classes for the fall semester. System's 10 campuses include well-known schools like UCLA and Berkeley. 280,000 students are enrolled in those schools. California State University System also announced it will cancel nearly all in-person classes. And Facebook has reportedly settled a lawsuit for $52 million with content moderators. The social media giant has agreed to pay thousands of workers who suffered psychological harm reviewing disturbing posts. A former moderator sued Facebook in 2018, alleging that she suffered post-traumatic stress disorder after reviewing content of rape, murder, and animal cruelty. She claimed the company did not provide a safe workplace. 
Facebook has not admitted or denied these claims. 640, 69 degrees. The coronavirus pandemic has turned social distancing into a household phrase. But distance does not mean you can't be social. After the break, we're going to see how you can enjoy others' company while staying six feet apart. No dinner parties, no bridge, not even a ball game. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, the National Poll on Healthy Aging found that one in three seniors reported being lonely. I went days without seeing people. Um, I mostly talked to a cat. Dr. Harry Taylor, who studies social isolation in older adults, says that it's one of the worst things we can do to our overall well-being. Those who are socially isolated have, uh, have about the equivalent rate of uh, experiencing mortality as those who smoke 15 cigarettes per day. When your cortisone, when your adrenaline are constantly running, it just does a lot of damage to your body and causes basically increased aging. And that makes it even worse for any pre-existing medical conditions such as cardiovascular disease or Alzheimer's. If you know someone who is alone, stay connected. Instead of eating dinner alone, try having a virtual dinner party. I love it. You can try to FaceTime, Zoom, or Skype. There, you can share a meal. Virtual hangouts can also be used for celebrating birthdays, exercise sessions, and even to play poker. Also, if you can't grab lunch together, try dropping off lunch at your friend's doorstep. Another way to connect, you can bring that movie theater experience home. Netflix offers a free app called Netflix Party, where you can synchronize video playback and ad group chats while watching your favorite Netflix shows. If you can't get your loved ones virtually, you could try sending a letter with a photo to brighten up their day. Stephanie Serna, KSET 12 News. Nonprofits here in San Antonio need help from the community now more than ever due to COVID-19. KSAT's Community Wishlist Wednesday highlighting the San Antonio Council nonprofit. Cancer, yeah, the, their mission is Cancer to... Cancer Council? It's a... It's yeah. San Antonio Cancer Council. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, their mission is to support the Mays Cancer Center for cancer research, treatment, and patient assistance. The nonprofit is asking for monetary donations to buy groceries and to help feed cancer patients. We apologize for the typo. If you're able to donate $25 towards the nonprofit, the gift will help provide a food box for a patient. More information right now at ksatcommunity.com. As we talk about the pandemic, there's so many people who are battling so many other things right now, too. We've got to remember them as well. Let's check traffic right now at 646. And right now, as we take a look at the map, you can see that the map appears to be OK. However, we do have some incidents out there that we're still clearing, like this major accident down on the southwest side. That's going to be 410 at 35 down there on the southwest corner of the city. Next, we're moving over to this accident here, major accident. Uh, Gulevra at Old Grissom. So that vehicle, that accident does involve an 18 wheeler. So keep that in mind. Moving over to Transguide, I 10 and Frio. No problems there on the inbound or the outbound lanes. Boy, things really filled up yesterday where we got tons and tons of rain. And we have another round coming by the weekend, but at least we have a couple of days to dry out. Yes, uh, Friday things are going to start to pick back up again. And then, yeah, especially Friday night and Saturday is the time we're going to have to worry about it. So. I even saw Lake Dunlap, which drained with the dam collapse mm -hmm. several years ago, was actually full to the brim yesterday in some spots. Oh, really? For a while, it'll drain yeah. back out. Wow. It's a great yeah, picture behind you. Because some areas picked up a good six inches of rain up in uh, just on the fringe of the northern Bear County and up into Kamal County. But yeah, this is the calm after the storm up there and beautiful, beautiful view. Thank you for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. Obviously, you got a pretty good cloud cover out there, although I was just texting with uh, Sarah Spivey and she said she was starting to see a couple little holes in the clouds out there. So keep your fingers crossed that we see more holes in the clouds by the time uh, lunchtime rolls around here because it's right after that is when the uh, Thunderbirds are scheduled to fly through town and talking about the rainfall amounts again up there in Kamal County and up toward Canyon Lake, you know, six inches of rain. These are just some of the estimates from radar and uh, some folks actually indicated they got more than that and also a lot of folks said that this was coming down basically just all in one fell swoop like a bucket dumped on them and uh, up there even close to uh, Bernie about uh, two and a half three inches of rain estimated and same thing over to the uh, east over toward Gonzales so yeah we had those pockets of extremely heavy rain and unfortunately that's going to be the situation again by Saturday mid upper 60s right now around the area humidity is still okay it's not ridiculously high humidity, but uh, we're going to keep it around for the next couple of days. As far as a computer model, 
couple of scattered showers around the area, mainly off to the east. If anything does pop up, rain chances are almost nil today, just a mention of it. But what we're going to have to watch out for, though, later on as we go into the late afternoon and evening hours, are some of these thunderstorms to develop out there along the, the dry land way out in the western portion of the state, moving in toward Val Verde County and right there along the uh, Rio Grande. And that's some of those could hold together and move a little further eastward, which is why Storm Prediction Center has the slight risk for severe storms. Uh, Edwards County, Val Verde County, and then that drops down to a marginal risk, basically west of 35. High winds and hail will be the biggest threats with that. And going a little further into the, uh, the future, as far as tomorrow is concerned, a couple of showers are possible. I think this model kind of does a bit of a broad brush as far as tomorrow afternoon, but then in the evening hours, a few showers around here, then we start to get into Friday and that's when we really start, start to watch out for potentially some heavy rain late Friday into early Saturday morning. We're going to have this disturbance moving on through here. Could have some strong thunderstorms with it as well, but we're looking at uh, definitely some heavy rain around here and throughout much of the day on Saturday. And even though this model kind of has us things tapering off a little bit. I think we'll still be seeing some of the uh, heavier or still some showers and thunderstorms around here even by Sunday and Monday 80 today at noon. I'm going to call it partly cloudy skies. We'll still have a fair amount of clouds around here and the problem being they're low clouds which is right about the uh, the altitude that the Thunderbirds were going to be doing their flyover. So they're going to be assessing that situation. Obviously 88 degrees for a high temperature today. Again, partly cloudy skies, probably a little bit more sunshine as the afternoon rolls on and not completely sunny skies. Unfortunately, a couple of showers here or there, and then we have to watch those thunderstorms that uh, have the potential to develop well out to the west tomorrow. A lot like today, then we get more rain moving in here tomorrow night into uh, Friday, more showers and thunderstorms, and then especially Friday night into Saturday and a good chance for the, the potential there for some very heavy rain around here on Saturday. But for today, we're still hopeful the Thunderbirds right. will make their flyover. Right. It's okay. just the fact that these are low clouds and just kind mm -hmm. of going to be kind of stubborn. If they're going to make the trip, we want to be able to see them. Mother Nature can bring that sun out and burn those clouds off. I know she can do it. If she wants to. Yeah. Keep fingers crossed. Thanks, Mike. 651, 69 degrees. The coronavirus is impacting education, making it almost impossible for some students. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to have tips to help kids with learning disabilities learn from home. Outside with live cam, another traffic update coming up with Officer Marcus Trujillo. And there are those clouds kind of socked in over South Texas right now. You're watching GMSA. We'll be right back. We're continuing to hope that the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds will fly over Military City, USA today. It's scheduled to start at 1.20 this afternoon and last about 30 minutes. It's part of Operation America Strong. Get to bring it back to Texas. We're really excited. I'm really excited about that opportunity. Even though we're distant, we're still together. And, and that's really the message we're trying to send. Thunderbirds will be in their Delta formation, low altitude, barely three feet apart, going about 450 miles an hour. We have the flight path, the planned flight path, and where you can see their flyover on ksat.com. We will keep you updated if Thunderbirds decide to change the flight times or postpone the flight once again due to inclement weather. Look at it's that possible. beautiful shot that underneath great? the plane with the big Thunderbird. Yes. Well, we're still hopeful they'll arrive around 120 this afternoon. Yeah, we're hoping and we'll keep you posted, everybody. Let's check on the roadways. Well, right now you're taking a look at TransGuide. That's I-10 at Frio. Uh, we do have a couple of accidents uh, to tell you about that still out there in the clearing stages. We still have this one here, this rollover accident. That's going to be 35 at 410. And then this one just about ready to open up. Uh, we have that one, Culebra, at Old Grissom Road. Mike. Thank you, sir. This is the picture that is not very pretty, and this is what uh, may be <laughs> putting things off today. A lot of clouds out there. We will see some sunshine later on today, but whether the clouds break up enough for the uh, Thunderbirds to fly, that's the big question if it's going to be soon enough. 80 at noon, 88 for a high temperature, and we got to watch out for heavy rain, maybe a shower or two today, but uh, Friday night and especially Saturday is what we got to watch out for. Time to plan ahead. Yep. Thank you. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Be back here for GMSA at 9.